Hello, I'm Anthony. I'm in the process of writing this song at the moment, uh, for which I've just recorded a guitar part. Now, this is a, a backing part, which I've um, recorded two essentially identical versions or attempted identical versions that I want to pan in the stereo field. When you do this, um, you get a lovely kind of thick sound. It, it generally improves many um, guitar backing parts. The problem is that you need to make sure that those two parts work well together. So I'm going to show you some um, tips today for how I go about processing this audio and making it not only sit well in the song, but also sit well with its sibling. Just before we start, I'm going to play you this audio. It's completely unprocessed at the moment. I'll do some editing on it today. And today I'm going to, I'm going to edit the first um, 16 bars of this piece. This is what it sounds like at the moment. odd little timing issue for the most part they're they're pretty good like I say they're very nearly identical as you'll see there are some um, instances where I play very slightly different phrases and that's all the good stuff you you want to try and keep as much of that idiosyncrasy between the two parts as possible but they do need to sit well together and they're clearly a couple of moments when things go slightly awry firstly we need to prepare the interface I'm going to open my lower editor so that I can see the audio and I'm going to process these audio events as a stereo pair. The whole point is to make them work well together. So there's very little point um, putting one side in mono or another. If there are any significant issues in the audio, I'm going to find them during this stage. First thing that I want to do is to solo just the guitar parts themselves. Then I'm going to make the two tracks that I'm interested in a bit bigger. Zoom in nice and tight. We're listening for issues between the two parts. We've taken it out of the context of the song now. We'll put it back in later. There's the first one. Something wrong at the beginning, at bar 17.3 got this little artifact in the audio. If I zoom in really tight, you can see that both of these chords actually play the kind of ghost chords, suggested chords, which is why they're so quiet. They start at 17.3. There's actually an artifact before each of the chords that I don't want. Put it on grid and jump straight to 17.3. This is how it should sound. So it's kind of a like an upstroke chord. Sounds perfectly fine in its own right. But when I introduce this little bit of artifact before the chord, it it kind of, it makes it feel out of time. It's actually a preparation for me playing the chord itself. I haven't started playing early. My fingers have done some sort of fluff and I've kind of done it on both parts. So I need to decide what to do with this. Now, part of my solution for this, because you could fix it in automation. You could basically just drop that part of the event down um, in automation. And the reason why I don't really want to do that is because later on, these parts are going to be used elsewhere in the song. This is a backing part that's going to be used underneath the solo. And there's also a verse two. I basically only recorded two versions of this thing when I was going around in cycle playing it multiple times. These were the only two that I was kind of reasonably happy with and knew I could fix, knew I could get better. But if I'm going to be copying this thing elsewhere in the song, I don't really want to be dragging along automation with them as well. I want to bake all of this stuff, bake the fix into the, into the audio event itself. There's something wrong in the audio. I'm going to fix it at source. So this is how we go about it. Engage my scissors. Make sure snap is off. It currently is, so that's all good. And I'm going to, with very sharp precision, just cut around these offending slurred bits. Now I can attenuate the audio. Later on, as you'll see, I'm going to bounce these audio events back together again. So it will eventually be a consistent part. But if I drop the volume of just those, those nasty bits by at least 10 dB, let's see if we've still got that kind of out of time feeling. No, it's pretty much gone. 
I'll drop it even lower. I want a tiny kind of suggestion of it still there because that's my fingers physically positioning themselves in place. If it's complete silence, that's going to sound a little bit wrong as well. That's fine now. Let's double check that it's still okay in the context of the song. Any forensic fixing like this, you always need to make sure that you've not inadvertently broken something at a higher level. Let's deactivate solo and listen to that again. Much better, much better, feels natural. I've soloed the guitars again. We're gonna carry on listening to the audio. Needless to say, we're only looking at the left hand audio in the, in the lower window, but I'm predominantly using my ears anyway. This is open so that I can kind of more closely catch anything that I hear or see is wrong. I can use my eyes, but obviously your ears are always king. There's an issue somewhere around 21.3. Yeah, the right hand channel is way too early. In the context of the song. Yeah, I can hear it quite clearly. Okay, so let's jump over to the right hand channel and we're gonna fix this with audio warp. We can see where the problem is. Let's just have a quick listen. We can put this in pure solo if we really want to. One chord second chord, third chord. The reason I'm making sure of that is because I need to set anchor points before the chord and after the chord, and then on the offending item itself. And I'm just gonna pick that up and move it to 21.3. And the fix should be as simple as that. But it isn't, because I wasn't paying sufficient attention. This chord is wrong as well. So, no problem, we've already got the anchor set. Move that over. And if I'd kind of taken an extra second to look in the main interface, it would have been patently obvious that the entire phrase was played early, not just the first chord. But I caught it, let's have a listen to that now. Okay, great. So we found it by listening carefully to the guitars just together and then we went into the context of the song and the fix has to work in both of those environments, not just one. Sometimes the entire song will hide problems that you've got, which is why I think it is important to, to, to kind of toggle between these two states. Let's jump back up to the left hand view to keep our kind of process consistent. Really happy with that. Let's listen to that again. Yeah, there's a problem there, isn't there? Somewhere in the 23s. Let's have a look in the main viewer. I'll toggle backwards and forwards between them and actually see the audio. And I can see that the left hand channel is a little bit early this time. I need to find where to set my anchor point for the for the chord in this kind of blurred. It's here. Let's set it there, that'll be fine. And now I can just mo move this forward a little bit. There's another one here. It's really easy for your ears to get confused if there's too much for them to listen to, but at this kind of level of detail, you can't really make those sorts of mistakes. Now it's this pair of chords uh, halfway between 25.3 and 4. And I'm going to have to put it in the context of the song to decide whether or not I want to be slightly late or actually on the nose. I think I want to be slightly late. I'm feeling that the left hand channel is about right. So I'm going to fix the right hand channel. And it's the same chord that we were playing with earlier with that little artifact, but this one isn't as, um, isn't, isn't as prominent. I'm not gonna worry about fixing that. See, when I'm setting up these anchors, I'm keeping all of the information, even all of this kind of pre-transient stuff. 
This chord has nothing to do with this noise over here, so the anchor separates the two. Everything else sounds pretty good, but it sounds pretty good in this context. So those two parts are now working pretty well together. I now need to put it back in the song and discover whether or not I missed any. I'm going to basically ignore the lower editor now, because at this point, any forensic correction of the audio should already have been done. I'm just really trying to listen to see if I've missed anything. With that more holistic view, I'm no longer happy about the edits made on 21. I have to be prepared to admit that I've made a mistake if I've made one. Now that I'm listening to it back, I'd rather those notes were just a little bit further forwards than they are. I've still got my anchor points set, so I'm just going to drag them forwards a bit. I think actually this is the problem, but we'll see. Let's just try that much. That felt quite good. Interesting point at bar 24, you can see that I've quite clearly played something different. That's not necessarily bad. Let's just check out each of those uh, phrases. quite happy for left and right to do different things there. It sounds perfectly good when played together. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. If I was doing this not in front of the camera, I'd probably have another couple of fly-throughs, maybe go and make a cup of tea and come back 15 minutes later and listen to it again, just to make sure that I'm happy that everything is really gelling together. But let's say that it is, let's say that we're happy with those edits, because it would only really be a rinse and repeat process and you don't really need to see that. What we need to do now is bounce these events. But before we do, I want to just do some preparation to the headroom at the beginning and end of the event because once we've bounced it we're going to lose anything outside of the boundaries of these events. So the way to do this is to engage grid mode, turn off snap to zero crossing. So now when I move these events out of the way I'm going to resize these events temporarily, just get them out of the way, don't care about them. I want to find the earliest point, there we go, when something else happens so I'm going to give myself the maximum amount of headroom at the end of this event. Similarly, at the beginning, how much room have I got to play with at the beginning? Well, there's absolutely no way I'm going to want more silence than that. So that's going to be absolutely fine. When I come to crossfading these events now, I've got more than enough in both directions than I could possibly need. Here we have that tiny little audio uh, edit I did in the middle of the events but don't care about any of that. I'm going to select everything and then we want to bounce the selection. I have a keyboard shortcut set up for it, but it's bounce selection. It'll say, do you want to replace the events? Say yes. That event's now good to go. So remember when I was saying that this is going to get used elsewhere in the song? Say I want to copy it over here. Well, the pre-process I need to do in order to do this conveniently 
is to set them exactly on the bar. Set these events exactly on the bar. I'm not losing anything when I duplicate these events and move them to where they need to be in the solo section. See this big empty gap here? Not a problem at all. I've got all of that information still at hand and I can create any kind of fade in that I want because I gave myself that headroom when I was bouncing the selections. Same at the end, I've got all of this tail. I can choose as much or little of it as I want and do the fading as required. So setting events onto bars before you move them elsewhere in the song just makes your life so much easier because every process that you perform on these events is always non-destructive until you bounce. Remember these, these second events, we haven't looked at this second part any, at any time in the song. I resize the events, it doesn't matter. All of the information is still there. I can now bring that in. Then I'm gonna to want to be thinking about crossfading these two events together. That's another job for another day. That'll do for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you again. Thanks very much.